Welcome to our first orientation video for the academic year 2020-2021. The purpose of this orientation is to become familiar with the special safety and health arrangements and control measures that apply at EIS amid the COVID-19 outbreak, ways you parents can help at home, the implementation of blended learning, parents' home support, the use of EIS web portal, and finally, guidelines for interaction and day-to-day -day communications between parents and the school community. Because of the coronavirus outbreak, the back-to-school plan looks different this year than it was in previous years. We know this is not just a novel virus, but a really novel situation for all families and educators. That's why Elite International School has ensured the school plan is a safe one. We have new health and safety policies in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19. This is in addition to the virtual learning components which have been added to our regular teaching and learning approaches. Maintaining the safety, health, and well-being of our students and teachers is of paramount importance. Hence, safety and health arrangements have been prepared and implemented all over the school campus. These arrangements aim at preventing the spread of coronavirus. As we all know, this virus is highly contagious and is spread when fluid droplets carrying the COVID-19 virus are transmitted from one person to another. When a person coughs, sneezes or shouts, droplets containing virus particles are released into the air and fall onto surfaces. If a person touches his or her eyes, nose or mouth after having touched other people's hands, objects or surfaces on which droplets containing the virus are lying, they can then catch the virus and become infected. That's why we all need to be well aware of how the virus is spread and what precautions need to be taken in order to mitigate the risk of it spreading at school. Educating ourselves, communicating with each other, and sharing the correct information are all essential at this stage. So what are the precautionary and preventive measures implemented at EIS? Temperature checks are carried out at the entrance using non-touch thermometers. Ahtirat health status is checked. Only staff and visitors who have a green health code are allowed to enter the school premises. Staff members and visitors must have their face masks on at all times. Parents will be allowed on school grounds, which are outdoors, for drop-up and pick-up. Only school staff and students are allowed into the school building for the safety of all. The nursing staff carries out visual wellness checks for symptoms of the virus. A dedicated and expanded safety and health team has been allocated to ensure the implementation of the safety measures set by the Ministry of Public Health and Ministry of Education and Higher Education. All staff members have been trained on safety measures. Physical distancing measures are taken in classrooms, such as providing seating that is 1.5 to 2 meters apart. Face masks are compulsory for all teaching and non-teaching staff. We've also organized and reduced flow in corridors and common areas. There's a one-way path to get access to the school building to minimize contact. Floor stickers are available in the school building, waiting areas, and common areas so as to maintain social distancing. There's a strict cleaning regime. All common surfaces are being disinfected throughout the day. Manipulative kits and educational resources are being cleaned after every usage. All spaces are thoroughly cleaned after each use in order to have them ready for the next group of students. Classrooms have been equipped with sufficient amount of hand sanitizers. Water dispensers are not available in the school as per the ministry's directive, and that's why we've requested you to send at least two to three water bottles with your children to make sure that they get enough water to drink throughout the day at school. The school's classroom attendance or structure has changed. A mix of virtual and in-class learning is in place. The classroom size has been reduced with staggered schedules. Based on the schedule, students are divided into distinct groups A, B, and C that stay together throughout the entire school day during in-person classroom instruction. Hence, we are reducing the number of students who come in contact with each other. 
and that's why it's very important that you send your child to school only on the designated dates. Otherwise, you will be contacted to pick your child up. And it's for the same reasons that students have their breakfast and lunch breaks inside their classrooms so as to avoid mixing with other groups. Students are dismissed on a staggered dismissal process by grade to facilitate social distancing and reduce the amount of congestion at and around the school during peak times. Students or employees who show any COVID-19 symptoms while at school will be moved to the isolation room. The isolation room is equipped with personal protective equipment requirements as per the Ministry of Public Health instructions. Parents will be contacted to come and pick up their child. The student or employee cannot return to school unless the doctor gives clearance. The student or employee needs to hand over the medical report, including the negative test if diagnosed with COVID-19 to the nurse before joining his or her class. Our safety and health school plan has all scenarios taken into consideration. So what if there is a confirmed case in the school, God forbid? The school will consult with the Ministry of Public Health and follow all safety and health requirements. Students and staff who might have been exposed to the case will be identified and contacted. Educating students and raising their awareness about the importance of personal hygiene at school is not enough by itself. It is important that you emphasize and model healthy behaviors at home too. How can you help at home? Practice hand washing with your child and explain why it's important to wash his or her hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially before and after eating and coughing or sneezing. To prevent washing, suggest washing hands for as long as it takes to sing the happy birthday song twice. When hand washing isn't available, Suggest that your child uses an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% of alcohol. Explain that your child should avoid touching his or her eyes, nose, and mouth. Following these steps can help you feel assured that your child is as safe as possible during the COVID-19 pandemic. You can also help by training your child to cover the sneeze or cough with a flexed elbow or a tissue then throw the tissue in a bin with the lid. Do your best so that your child avoids close contact with people who are sick. And when the child is sick himself or herself, keep them at home and maintain a distance from others. Keep his or her eating utensils separate from the rest of the household to ensure the safety of all your family members. You should monitor your child each day for signs of COVID-19. These signs include fever, nasal congestion or running nose, cough, sore throat, shortness of breath, fatigue, headache, muscle aches, nausea or vomiting, diarrhea, and poor appetite. Regularly clean and disinfect all objects and surfaces that are frequently touched. Develop daily routines before and after school that foster healthy habits such as packing healthy meals and hand sanitizers in the morning and washing hands as soon as your children come home. What to do if your child is exposed to a confirmed COVID-19 case? You first need to check with the health center in which your child is registered. If the doctor diagnoses that there is no COVID-19 case, then the student either stays at home as per the doctor's prescription or returns to school with a medical report. If God forbids the doctor suspects COVID-19 case and requires a PCR test, then you need to inform the school administration before and after the test. If the test result is negative, the student returns to the school with a medical report. If it's positive, the student stays at home as per the Ministry of Public Health guidelines quarantine measures. The school administration in this case will contact the Ministry of Public Health and would follow its directives. 
As per the instructions of the Ministry of Education and Higher Education, Elite International School has adopted a blended learning approach, which is a combination of in-class and online learning in a way that the one complements the other. To maintain quality education in all its teaching and learning approaches, Elite International School has launched its e-learning portal and ensured that all students received in-depth training on its use on the first three days of school, that is from September 1st to September 3rd. As we believe that your involvement is key to our student success, we would like to take the opportunity to show you how you can help your younger ones access the portal, engage in class discussions, and submit their assigned e-quiz or schoolwork on our e-learning portal. To be able to access EIS e-learning portal, on the web browser, you need to type www.eliteinterschool.com. On the home page of Elite International School official website, click on e-learning. The e-learning portal tab will appear just click on it. Now that you've clicked on the e-learning portal, this page would appear. All you need to do is to enter your child's credentials. That is the username and password. Be careful, they are case sensitive, so make sure to use the correct ID and password. Then click on login. Once you've entered the correct username and password of your child, this screen will appear. As you can see, the portal consists of a number of tabs, dashboard, calendar, e-learning, e-resources, e-quiz, schoolwork, circulars, and reports. Each of these tabs has a specific function which we will be tackling shortly. This is in addition to a bell appearing on top of the screen by clicking on it, you will be able to get access to the latest information or materials uploaded by the teacher. The calendar tab serves as a planner. By clicking on it, your child will be able to see the deadlines of all allocated assignments. Make sure that he or she doesn't miss out on any. The e-learning tab is where all the learning takes place. As you can see, all the subjects are mentioned on the left side of the screen. On daily basis, your child is supposed to click on Math, Science, English, and Arabic tab to be able to access the information that the teacher has allocated. For the other subjects, they are included and put based on your child's class schedule. Once you click on a specific subject, the topic will be reflected on your screen. The information can be the form of videos, PowerPoint presentation, or any other visual aids that facilitate learning. To ensure that student-teacher interaction takes place, there is a discussion pane for every topic. You can exchange private messages with the teacher to clarify any doubts that the child has or can answer any questions posed by the teacher in the same place. Now we move on to the fourth tab, which is e-resources. In e-resources, the teacher would place all the references that the child might need at any time for any topic or lesson. To be able to check all the references, the child needs first to select the given subject, then to download the file as the arrows show. Remember, you can click on the bell icon to check the latest assignments, projects, and quizzes assigned by the teacher to your child. To check students' understanding, whether in class or online, all teachers will be preparing and posting e-quizzes. All the child needs to do is to click on the given subjects. As you can see, the number next to the subject indicates that there is a quiz awaiting to be completed. For example, if you look next to the subject of English, you will notice that there is a number one, which means there is one quiz assigned in English. 
make sure that the child completes the quiz before it expires. The expiry date is at the end of the post. The small blue icon is where the child should click to be able to start or begin the quiz. Once the child decides to take the quiz, a small pop-up window will appear informing that the countdown will start now. So the child needs to make sure that he is well focused and well prepared in the first place before taking any quiz for any subject. The e-quiz consists of different types of questions. The one you see now is a true or false type. Once students click on the correct answer, they need to click on the green button next to move on to the second one. This is a multiple choice question. The students need to select only one correct answer. Be careful, the time left is shown on the screen as well for you to ensure that the student answers within the given time frame. Short answer can also be one of the questions that the teacher might assign. The student needs to type down the correct answer and then Click on next to move on to the next question. The fourth type of question is filling in the blanks. The student needs to write down the correct word using correct spelling. Always keep an eye on the time left because once it's over, the student will not be able to answer any more questions. Once the student finishes answering all the questions, a pop-up window will appear indicating the end of the quiz. By clicking on the finish button, the quiz will be submitted and the teacher will be able to correct it. If the child feels that he hasn't answered properly some of the questions, he can click on the cancel button and retake the quiz from the very beginning. Avoid losing your time by being well prepared, well ahead of taking the quiz. By clicking on the schoolwork tab, the students will be able to access all the assignments put by the teacher. Click the number to see the attachment that is shown under the subject. Once the student clicks on the number icon, a small window will appear. The student needs to download the file to be able to answer the questions and submit the assignment. Once the student finishes his task, he needs to upload it for the teacher to be able to check it and correct it. Where would he upload the work? By clicking the icon that the arrow shows. By clicking on the circulars tab, you will be able to access all circulars sent by the school administration. Click on the icon that the arrow shows to be able to download any placed file. Reports is the last tab appearing in the portal. By clicking this tab, you will be able to check the student task status report. Now you need to filter the information by entering the subject, work type, date, and then clicking on view report. Suppose you want to check the assignments report for math. This means you need to select math as your subject. Now you can select the work type you would like to check. It could be all work types or a specific one like project, homework, or quizzes. You can specify the date range to check your child's report during that period of time. After selecting the date you want, click on View Report. Children need to access and log in to the online portal on a daily basis. They also need to complete their quizzes and assignments independently and on time for our teachers to be able to check their understanding, we teach any topic they might struggle with, and provide accurate and effective evaluation of their performances. How can you help at home during blended learning? As we all know, children need structure. We need to invent entirely new structures to get every one of us through our days. Make sure that there is a schedule for the day that includes study time and play time. You need to support your child by setting the pace 
building a physical space intended for learning and continue to encourage in the absence of a daily school attendance. Carry out check-ins while your child is watching the recorded lessons prepared for him or her or completing his or her assignments. This keeps you up to date and knowledgeable of when your input might be necessary. Make sure that your child submits all his or her schoolwork on time. By designating an area of your home for learning, you can also keep an eye on your child's progress and learning styles while noting behavior, opportunities, and barriers. Help your child stick to his or her routines and make learning playful by incorporating it into everyday activities like cooking, family reading time, or games. As we are fully aware of the importance of interaction and day-to-day -day communications between you, dear parents, and our school community, we have set some guidelines according to which you are encouraged to communicate with the school administration from 6.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. from Sunday to Thursday by calling the school phone numbers or by sending an email to info at eliteinschool.com. The school administration will communicate with you through circulars published on its portal as well as SMS if needed. Please make sure that you check the portal daily. You can also send private messages to your children's teachers on the EIS portal for any assistance or clarification related to academics or technical supports. Parents and visitors will only be allowed inside the school premises by appointment and within a limited time frame to ensure the safety of all the school community. All parents and visitors will be screened by the health and safety team for masks, temperature below 37.8 and green ahtiraz status. Physical distancing must be observed by all visitors at all times. Thank you for watching this orientation video. I wish you good health and all the best and hope that everyone is staying safe.